Hi, everybody. Uh, this is TFS Chan coming to you here to talk about the first day, or I guess the second day of the World Cup, the first main slate, classic slate of the 2022 Qatar or Qatar World Cup. Uh, it's very exciting. Um, you know, you know, just like the Olympics, the World Cup happens every four years. And yeah, it's 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 gonna be interesting to have the World Cup in the middle of winter in Qatar. But um it's gonna feel a little weird, but um that also means maybe you know there are a lot of external variables that we'll need to consider. Um just the the, the given the nature of <clears throat> The, the season, given the season of the World Cup happening in the winter and all that, you know, that kind of has messed up a lot of the schedules in the in, in the in the in the club leagues and seasons and all that. So I'll, I'll dive it all into that throughout the World Cup tournament um, as I go. But just I just wanted to kind of, um, you know, get ahead of the macro stuff um at the beginning of this video um a lot of the people have asked me questions about <clears throat> first of all the stagger time um of the games on a slate so for example on the first slate um for monday november 21st we have an eight o'clock game eastern time that i'm speaking of eight o'clock in the morning eleven o'clock in the morning and then two o'clock in the afternoon right so is it beneficial to kind of like have players, you know, uh, from the last game or from the later games in your roster for lay swap? Um, I personally do not think so. I don't think that should dictate um, your lineup building in soccer DFS um, for a few reasons. Uh, first of all, I think, you know, it really depends on each slate, but, you know, just look at looking at the odds, like for this, this, this exact slate, um, I think it's a good example. There's not a, there's not a clear favorite. Um, there's not going to be a clear favorite um, in most of the World Cup matches, at least in the tournament. You know, there are eight groups of four teams in each of those eight groups. So 32 teams, so 32 best national teams, you know, from 32 different countries have made it to this stage of the finals of the World Cup tournament. And really, I mean, there's not going to be like a Manchester City or Liverpool-esque um, favorite at minus 2,000, 3,000 or something like that, right? So there's not going to be anything like that. Like, for example, England over Iran, as you probably guys don't know much about Iranian Iranian soccer team, but like England, you've heard of all the players on the national team, probably like Harry Kane and Sterling we'll talk about, and they're only at minus 300, right? So most likely they'll win, but, you know, it's not out of the picture that Iran could win. Um, and speaking of which, I think the second thing is some people have asked me questions about, you know, whether I think the teams that have practiced or trained longer together will perform better compared to, let's say, England. So, like, I think England versus Iran is a is a perfect example of that. Iran has had more time together. At least the players for Iran have had more time together. For those players, most of the players on the Iranian national team, you know, are, do not play in you know, the Premier League or, you know, La Liga, like the major club leagues that had the seasons ongoing in the fall, right? So it's more likely that Iranian team probably has better chemistry, yes, but I think it kind of is negated by the talent that's on, talent and quality of players that are on the English team, right? So, it kind of evens out, but, you know, at the World Cup level, um, just like in the NBA or NFL, any other major sports that you guys are used to, talent and quality matters. Um, you know, just like in the NBA. I mean, really, soccer, you know, there are some superstars, even though it's a team sport, you know, uh, you know, a lot of the good quality players do matter um, at the stage. Um, and, you know, based on the form that those players are in, it really matters um, a lot at this stage, in my opinion, especially in an individual matchup like this. So, 
Um, I do think Iranian like team chemistry will be good, but I just feel like they lack the same type of quality players that England has. But England is also known for not scoring enough goals, but also just lacking, you know, build up soccer um, in the past and not finishing the finishing, you know, uh, around the goal. So anyway, so I'll go all into that. Um, but I just want to go into those macro stuff um, that I think Sheets has asked questions about on the theories and aspect of it. Um, this is the True DFS Discord for Soccer Channel. Um, if you are interested, come join us. Um, we'll go over a lot of questions. I had a lot of fun discussions in this channel. Um, and also I will be posting a lot of, you know, starters, obviously when they're confirmed, but also my favorite plays um, for cash and GPP in this channel probably. So yeah, come join us. I'll be, I think it'll be exciting. Um, we will get the starters for each of those game, each of these games, 60 to 90 minutes before each game on Twitter, probably. Um, so I just want to make sure that you guys know when to look and when to late swap and all that. So it's just like the EPL Premier League where, you know, the, the starters get confirmed about 60 minutes before each match. So yeah, just tr treat them, treat them the same. Um, but as mentioned, you know, with the stagger times on the slate, I think it's going to be interesting to see um, who you put in the utility spot and then maybe potential for late swap and all that. But I'll go into that um, as I go into each individual matchups. All right. So first matchup on the slate is England versus Iran. Um, England, like I said, is a favorite at minus 300. And um, as you guys know, the whole tournament is um, being hosted at Qatar. So there's not really a home team other than Qatar. <laughs> um, so really at a neutral site. Um, um, so yeah, so this one, this this is the website that I use to check the lineups, but it looks like they don't have the projected starters for the World Cup games. So maybe I will go to Rotowire. Um, so Rotowire is the website that I use a lot for soccer. Um, I think it's a great website if you want to look at like matchups and stats um, and projected starters. So I'll kind of go over the starters, projected starters here. But um, I just wanted to let you guys know that um, the first starting lineups for these countries will be different. I guarantee you that um, the starters are more the starting lineups are more volatile than what we're used to playing in Premier League um, and Bundesliga and other major leagues, club leagues like that at the national level. It really depends on who fits, who meshes better with whom. Um, I think as Sheets mentioned this, something like that, uh, so questions like this, but um, players from the same club or same teams, um, do they tend to perform better together? Yeah, of course. They've been training and playing together quite a bit, but um, you know, we're not, uh, that's not going to be like a primary factor for me, um, to look at. I think it happened. I mean, like I picked two players in my DFS lineup and they happen to be on the same, happen to play for the same club. Yeah, that, that's great. I think that's a, that's a plus, but it's not going to be a determinative, the de determinative, uh, the factor, um, for me to, you know, build a lineups with. So, um, so for England, like like you'll see, um, I guess Phil Foden, um, I guess Raheem Sterling now plays for Chelsea. He used to play for Man City. So I mean, like until last year, Sterling used to play on Man City with Phil Foden, um, and then you know like John Stones plays for Man City. So. Yeah, I mean, like I can see that, but I just feel like it doesn't really matter that much. Um, so there's that. Um, for England, I think. Um, sorry, last last thing, last macro thing, and I'll go and I'll go into each lineups. Okay. Um, in the World Cup matches, um, this is very important. I think this is probably the most important thing. Uh, you know, for me to uh point out in the World Cup in general 
uh, DFS. There aren't that gonna be that many goals. Okay, um, the the total over under on goals will be lower generally compared to club matches. What does that mean for DFS purposes, right? So we want to pick the guys that have higher floors in those um, narratives um, and predictions. I mean, if it's gonna end the game, if the game's gonna end one nothing, two nothing, two to one, we want to have. Obviously, we want to have goal scores, right? But the opportunity cost is not um, gonna be, you know, great that 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 great if you don't have a goal scorer, right? So, you just want to make sure that you have high floor guys like those players that have shares or monopolies on the set pieces. Penalty kicks, um, corner kicks, free kicks, penalty kicks, um, to name it. You know, just make sure that you are aware of those uh, set piece takers. I will post them as I can for each of the matchups um, in our Discord channel, so that it, hopefully that will be helpful. Um, but I will talk about the set piece takers on this um, video for these uh, six countries, but. I just want to point out that in general for soccer DFS for the World Cup, you want to focus more. You want to put more emphasis on picking the high, higher floor guys and then maybe like sprinkle them with, you know, sprinkle the lineups with who you think will score. Right. Like one or two goals. I mean, there's going to be it's going to be very rare that somebody will score a hat trick and stuff like that. I mean, maybe for like super teams like France or Argentina, stuff like that, but it can happen. But in most of the games, I'd say at least two third of the games, I'm pretty sure that it's going to, the total over under, it's going to be two goals max. So, um, so I think that's very important to kind of remind yourself as you're building the lineups. So for England, it's going to be Karen Trippier. Um, I think that's going to probably have a monopoly in my opinion, um, maybe he'll share with Phil Foden or Luke Shaw. Um, but those are the three guys that I will be interested in, in terms of set pieces. Um, Trippier is probably going to be a lock in all of my lineups if he does end up starting. Um, I think on this projected lineup, it's going to be a 5-3-2 or 3-5-2 formation where De uh, Trippier is going to be on the right side, you know, crossing the ball quite a bit. So he has the upside to assist a goal from the right flank um, or from the corner kicks or free kicks and stuff like that. So I think he has tremendous value. Um, I think he's going to be probably, you know, as close as a lock on this slate, um, just given the lack of the same type of upside and high floor as Kieran Trippier provides. So, and then after that, I think for England, like I said, Luke Shaw, if he lines up on the left side, crossing the ball. Yeah, I mean, that that pre creates a lot of the scoring chances for these strikers, especially for Harry Kane. So if you are playing Harry Kane in your lineup, you know, you want to have one of those flankers um, that can cross the ball to him for the, for the assist upside just to correlate. Um, and then, I, <clears throat> yeah, like Harry Kane, I think a lot of people will play him and I understand he has the best scoring odds um, on the slate amongst all the teams. Um, England is the biggest favorite, um, you know, and Iran has, you know, I think their defense is okay. Um, at least from the stats that I saw. Um, but I just want to point out that Harry Kane also provides some, some floor for his, with his crosses and, you know, scoring chances created and all that as well. So, um, I think he'll be popular. I think he'll be a pretty good easy fade in the tournaments um, if you think his ownership will be high. I think his ownership it will be high, um, just given the name value. Um, you know, obviously the USA players will be popular for a reason, but I think USA and English players um, will be the most popular and most owned players on this slate. And then, like I said, Phil Foden, um, he is a he has a higher floor than Harry Kane, um, but he doesn't take as many shots as like Harry Kane, and Foden does not have a monopoly on set pieces as Trippier. So, 
you know, I think he makes a good GPP play. Um, yeah, I think I think that's about it for England. Um, I'll talk about the goalies at the end of um this video, but um, Iran. Um, uh, I, so they're the biggest underdog, right? But I do think they have a pretty good shot. Just I think England national team has been so volatile over the years. I mean, I can definitely see them crumble against Iran, but you know, in eight out of 10 times, I'm sure England will dominate. And I'm sure England will dominate possession no matter what, even regardless of the outcome of the match. So I would focus a lot on the English players in this matchup. But if you are to, you know, play Iranian players in GPP, I would go with Tarami. I mean, he, he is probably the star player, stud player for that team, in my opinion, just after watching Porto, his club team. And then Yahan Bakash, Yahan Bakash, um, that is another guy that you can focus. Um, I think he's cheaper than most strikers that um, I would focus on. Um, and then Godos um, is another guy that I would focus. So, yeah, I mean, really those three guys would, would be, you know, the ones that I'm interested in. I would not play any of the fullbacks for Iran. I think, like I said, England should dominate possession there. So I think if you are playing for Iran, you're playing for the goals, like I said, because you're not expecting Iran to dominate possession, to have the ball, and really to create chances and all that, you need to have the ball. <laughs> so, um, so that's probably it for England. I expect this match to probably end one nothing, two nothing in England's uh, favor. Um, and obviously that favors, you know, Pickford, maybe with the win and clean sheet, um, odds, um, to play, play Pickford. But I think to pay up for Pickford, you just have to sacrifice a lot in other positions. So I'm not sure if that's worth it, but I think for cash, you don't really have to play him in my opinion, just given how close the odds are, England is not like a minus 2000 favorite, right? Like they're minus 300. So um, I don't think, I think I'm leaning toward not playing Pickford and then maybe paying up in other positions. The next matchup is Senegal versus Netherlands. Um, just like I said, given the ownership, high ownership of USA um, and then England, players i think this match is going to be the lowest owned at least players from this match will be the lowest owned um so that makes this match very interesting intriguing for gpp purposes um and then for cash i mean i'll point out the high floor guys but if ismaila sar starts i think he's gonna be in a lot of my lineups i really like sars upside in the open play um i think poppy sar uh, and then Ismaili Sar are guy like both Sar you know, uh, uh, players. I think they'll be interesting. Um, they interest me rather for for this tournament, at least for this late. Um, so those are the two guys I would focus. And then Diada, I think that's a pay down option. Um, I definitely think that he can net one against Netherlands today or on Monday. Um, so I think that's going to be interesting. And then for Netherlands, um, Netherlands players, actually, I like quite a few of them. Um, I think Dumfries is, is this questionable, but I think he is very expensive um, for his role. But, you know, his role also involves crossing the ball quite a bit. And then Coop Biners is probably the one that I'm interested in um, just to, you know, for set pieces and, uh, stuff like that. Um, and then Gakpo, um, those three guys right here are probably what I'm interested in. I think Jansen will get subbed out early, but he has the goal upside, same as Bergwijn. So really those three guys there are, you know, the, the ones that I'm interested in. Danny, Daily blind or blend. Um, he doesn't really cross the ball that much for my taste to for me to consider. So really, I think these scoop miners, Dumfries and Gakpo are what intrigue me for, from the Netherlands uh, squad. I think this could turn into a two to one um, match or zero to zero match, really. I think the range of outcomes is probably the biggest in this match compared to other two matches. So 
for what it's worth. I think, you know, it's going to be interesting. And then for my match prediction, uh, I think it's going to be one to one ultimately. Uh, I think both teams will score. I think I like, like I said, I like Diada as a sneaky GPP option. And then Saar is my favorite from Senegal. And then Netherlands, if they were to score, I think it's going to be Gakpo. Um, I think that's who I'm interested in most. All right. The ultimate matchup that everyone will be watching, hopefully, in the U.S., um, USA versus Wales. The USA team is fine. I think they will be okay. Um, I do not have as high expectations as some of my friends who have. Um, first of all, they're the second youngest team in this tournament amongst 32 countries um, for what it's worth. Um, but I think this game, I'll just go with the prediction first. I think Wales will win. Um, Wales has been bad, but I, maybe a, maybe a tie. Wales has been bad too, so maybe a tie, maybe a one to one as well. But USA also has a; they always have a hard time scoring the goal, scoring goals. Um, so, but anyway, anyway, so let's go into DFS uh, mode. So USA, um, obviously, it has to start with Pulley Pulley God Pulisic. Um, he's gonna take most of the set pieces, if not all of them. Um, he is the, you know, Captain America for the team. So, um, but he's very expensive. Um, I don't know if I'll play him in cash or not. I'm still debating. Um, but he's going to have a lot of the pieces. If you think USA will dominate possession, which doesn't happen often, but against this bad Wales team, I think USA can, maybe 60 to 40. I think Pulisic will have decent amount of opportunities. Um, which gives him a decent floor, but his price tag is really expensive. And then the next uh, player that I'm interested in, and personal, my personal favorite, um, just given the performances he's shown at Leeds United and the EPL, and even before that, I was really a big fan of him, and I am still a big fan of him, it's Brendan Aronson. I think he's going to have, have a huge World Cup if USA goes far. Um I really like Aronson here on this slate um, for GPP. Um, I don't know if I can play him in cash, but we'll see. If I'm not playing Pulisic, I mean, I would consider Aronson. He may take some set pieces, few set pieces. Um, if not, then he still has pretty good chances um, in the open play. Um, so I really like these two guys. And then after that, I don't know if McKinney will start. He's questionable. Um, but other than these two guys, I'm interested in, in the wingbacks, um, fullbacks, Anthony Robinson, and then Sergio uh, Dest. Um, really, any of any either either of them will be fine. I probably prefer Anthony Robinson, just given the form that he's shown in the EPL in the last couple months or a couple weeks. So I really like Robinson, and then Dest, um, and then Pulisic and Aronson for the USA squad. <laughs> And then for the for the Wales uh, squad, um, if Nico Williams starts, I mean, I think he's gonna take a lot of the set pieces, just like uh, Gareth Bale. What uh, he might take some direct free kicks to shoot on the goal. Um, so I know Bale's kind of washed up in my opinion, but you know, I think he still gives a provides a threat, um, offensive threat for Wales against the United States. But Nico Williams is probably my favorite guy on the Wales team um, that I really like, actually. So I might just lock him in, just like Kieran Trippier. I don't know. But I really like Nico Williams for this squad. Um, like I said, I think that's that's probably it, really. Nico Williams, Eric Vale. If you are playing GPP, yeah, I mean, Daniel James or Kiefer Moore <clears throat> could be the options. But I prefer James over Moore if you have to choose. Um, but really that's, you're playing those two guys for scoring upside, which could happen against the U S the back, back line, Zimmerman and Reem are kind of weak in my opinion, at least Reem, I've seen him in the EPL, which he's given up a lot of chances. 
But like I said, the Wales team is not that great. So who knows what's going to happen. But like I said, I think it's going to be a either 0-0 zero to zero or 1-1 one to one, um, in this matchup. So if somebody were to ask me what the – you know what? Which one? I think the highest goals uh, will be. Like I said, I think it's gonna be Senegal versus Netherlands. Um, I think like the USA England um, ownership will be very high. So really, I don't think many people will play the strikers from the Senegal and Netherlands matchup. Um, so for what it's worth, I think I think that's where I'm gonna go in my opinion. Um, oh, for goalkeepers, like I said. Make sure make sure your goalkeeper correlates with um your the rest of your lineup. Like I said, if you are if you are playing Pickford, right? Like you are probably not gonna play any Iranian strikers, right? Because if you are playing an Iranian striker, you think some you know at least one of them will score, and that's gonna negate the Pickford's uh score uh clean sheet and win odds. Um so just make sure you positively correlate your lineup when you are choosing a goalkeeper. Um, in terms of playing like Hennessy, I don't know if USA will shoot enough outside the box for him for his uh, saves up save upsides. Um, and then same for actually, I think I think there's going to be plenty of shots in between Senegal and Netherlands. Yeah, like if you are playing Pickford, like you are probably just gonna play him for the clean sheet win upside, the ten point upside, um, because most likely England will dominate the possession and the Iranian players will not have many shots on the English goal, which negates Pickford's save upside or save potential for this for the for the points. So it's just make sure that you think about those things um, when you are playing. Like I said, I think England will dominate possession. I think in the other two matches, I'm not quite sure. I think it's going to be 50-50, 50-50 in the other two matches. Um, so, yeah, I think that's about it. Um, no, the substitutes are not viable. Um, so I would not play substitutes. Um I think that's it. So yeah, if you guys have any other questions, let me know at DFS Chan. Um, this video was sponsored by True DFS, so go check them out. Um, otherwise, yeah, good luck out there, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks. Bye bye.